Hey, buenos dias, que onda, que paso amigos, welcome back to the channel, John's Moto Garage. Today we're talking about some myths about Harley Davidsons. Now, if you're new to my channel, then welcome, thanks for tuning in. I'm just a Joe Schmo, I'm no expert. I wanted to make sure when I did this video that I wasn't ripping anybody else off. So, these are some myths that I've noticed over the last year and a half, two years, going through comments, articles, some videos that I've seen, things people seem to say about Harley Davidson and I personally haven't been able to found, find really any foundation in these claims or in these assertions. And there is a video by Matt Laidlaw that he did a couple years back regarding five misconceptions about Harleys. I made a point not to watch that video. I wanna wait until after I do this one, then I'll watch his, see if we're on the same page, see if any of our opinions line up and I think it'll be interesting to see that. So I'll put a link below to his video. Yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So as you can see, I've got a lot of different motorcycles in the garage. I'm not partial to any you know, particular brand, make or model. I've got Harleys, I've got the Metric Cruisers, I've got my Dyna back there. And one of the myths, one of the things I hear all the time is that Harley Davidsons are super unreliable. And coincidentally, my bike is in pieces here good old Dyna but it has nothing to do with the bike being unreliable it's just that I've been beating the crap out of it I've been trying to learn wheelies on that thing and trying to learn drifts and finally it just gave in I tipped it over one too many times cracked that outer primary and it's leaking oil so again nothing to do with the bike more so to do with me beating the crap out of it but let's look into this unreliability myth everybody refers to one particular article by consumer reviews or consumer affairs with regards to this and they basically ranked Yamaha number one with only an 11% failure rate. Close behind you've got Yamaha, Honda, and Harley-Davidson comes in fifth with a 26% uh, failure rate on their motorcycles, so about twice that of Yamaha. However, the problem I see with this article is, first, it's outdated. It's from like 2013 or 14, and the data is probably from before that. Also, they only interviewed, or they only sent this out to about 12,000 plus or minus people, and so, seems like a rather small sample and the problem with it is they don't define what does failure mean they don't say if it's like a small oil leak if it's catastrophic engine failure there is no definition there so there's no way of discerning between the most basic quote-unquote failure versus something that's actually severe and so it's hard to really look at that and take much from it granted I didn't spend hours and hours you know digging into this but I really couldn't find any definitive article or source that is able to rank these different brands with reliability and so i can't really find anything to say that harley davidson's are unreliable motorcycles i know there was a time where amf took over harley and at that time they were plagued with issues but i think those years are behind us as far as i'm aware if you jump on forums for pretty much any make or model you're going to find the issues you're going to find recalls all that stuff but from my personal experience you know anecdotally i can speak to that I've had a lot of different bikes. I've ridden a lot of bikes and ridden them hard. And the Harley is right there with all the other bikes in terms of hanging in there basically. You know, I put it through a lot of crap, a lot of abuse, and it seems to do just fine. If you do have the data, please send it my way. I'd love to look into that and, you know, look at the numbers, look at the actual data, not just hearsay. Now, another thing, people always say that Harley Davidson's are super expensive. And there's two parts to this, uh, expensive in terms of buying a new motorcycle and then also expensive in terms of repairs. Let's talk first about repairs. So I've got my Harley back here. Obviously, I'm trying to repair it myself. You've got labor costs. I don't know about labor. I think Harley techs do typically charge a little bit more for labor, so you may be correct on that. But let's talk about parts. In general, what I found is power sports parts, period, are expensive say that one five times fast. What I mean by that is I had a Kawasaki Voyager. I had to replace the power pump or the uh, fuel pump on that thing. And it cost me like, I don't know, 1200 bucks out the door, something outrageous just for a little fuel pump. I just noticed somebody put a zip tie on my clutch. I have no idea why they did that. It's probably one of my kids playing around. Anyway, where was I with the Kawasaki? Yeah, a little fuel pump, that was expensive. That's Kawasaki, it wasn't Harley Davidson. Uh, on my Suzuki, I cracked the stator cover. Cracked the uh, outer stator cover on that thing. You wanna know what it cost to repair that on my Suzuki? 215 bucks. You wanna know what my outer primary on the Harley costs? 192 bucks. So, unfortunately with motorcycles, repairs 
tend to be expensive. Harley, Metric, Triumph, I hate to say it, but pretty much all of them are gonna be expensive. The same goes if you're doing add-ons, exhaust on a sport bike versus exhaust on a Harley. Based on what I've seen, it's all right there in that same price range. Tires, tires are expensive across the board. You uh, sometimes may pay a little premium on some Harley stuff if you go directly to Harley, but you know, you have options out there and it seems to be pretty much par for the course as far as what I've seen. Now let's talk the actual bikes themselves. I compared Harley with Indian, with BMW, with Honda, and same thing, whether you're looking at the big touring models, they're all right there within one, $2,000 plus or minus of each other, the whole mix. And then additionally, if you look at the Sportsters, the, you know, Street Rod 750, the Vulcan S, the Honda Shadow, and do comparisons there, same thing I'm finding is they're all within one to $2,000 of each other. Now, some people are gonna argue, yeah, but you get way more performance and way better tech out of some of these other brands. Fact of the matter is, typically when you're buying a Harley, you're looking for a cruiser. You're not necessarily looking for the performance. But let's even take the performance aspect. If you're gonna compare it, you gotta compare the Harley Cruiser with the other cruisers out there. So again, if you're looking at your Harley, so let's say Street Glide or Road Glide, compare it to the Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager, another V-Twin Cruiser. You're not getting much, uh, you know, I think you're getting less performance out of the Voyager because it's it's an outdated platform. It's been around since 09. They haven't done any updates to it. Um, obviously, if you look at like a Honda Goldwing, that's no longer a V-Twin. The same with the BMW. It's no longer V-Twin. Um, take Harley against the Indian. I know the Indian Challenger, that thing's pretty gnarly. Liquid cooled V-Twin. Uh, the Harley against like the Chieftain, those 111s. I'm not 100% sure, but again, you don't typically go out and buy a big V-Twin Cruiser touring motorcycle with performance in mind. But one thing I will say is back in like 0203, lots of brands were coming out with their muscle cruisers. You had a Honda VTX 1800, you had the Suzuki Boulevard M109R, um, these big muscle cruisers, and you got a lot of people talking about those, how they just blow the Harleys out of the water, myself included, I've mentioned that. But you can't forget to mention that at the same time in 2002, Harley came out with their own muscle cruiser, the Harley V-Rod initially 1130 then they bumped it up to 1250 cc and the harley v rod although a smaller displacement engine actually blows those larger displacement big v-twin muscle cruisers out of the water zero to 60 quarter mile times the harley v rod is definitely one to be a reckoned with i read one article about they did a muscle bike shootout and next to the yamaha v max and maybe one other bike the harley v rod was the other one to kind of to beat as far as like just pure sheer power from a muscle cruiser. So as far as price, like I said, based on what I've seen, Harleys are right there with the other ones. The fact of the matter is if you're buying a brand new motorcycle, they're expensive and maintaining a motorcycle is expensive. That's power sports for you. And then in terms of performance, yeah, if you compare a Harley to a super sport or to a sport bike, it's not gonna be as good and it's not gonna be as fast, but if you're comparing a Harley V-Twin Cruiser with the other V-Twin Cruisers that are built for touring and cruising, it's pretty much right there with the other ones. Another thing you hear all the time, Harleys are heavy and they're slow. We spoke a little bit about the slow performance side of things where you gotta say compared to what? Heavy compared to what? Slow compared to what? Heavy, same thing, dude. If you compare the Harleys with your other big V-Twin Cruisers and even the Yamahas and the BMWs, the new like Honda, I gotta say the new Honda Goldwing weighs less than these big ultra classic Harley touring motorcycles. But otherwise these big touring bikes, they all weigh you know in excess of 800 pounds. They're not lightweight bikes, they're heavy. All right here's another one you hear a lot is only like old dudes, old white dudes, lawyers, doctors, those kinds of dudes um, are the only dudes riding Harleys. Obviously that's not true. I'm like a wannabe Latino middle-aged dude, I guess you could call me. I ride Harleys. My wife has jumped on and ridden Harleys. She's a chick. I know people of all races, ethnicities, genders, um, nationalities who are fans of Harley Davidsons. So it's just not, it's not just the old white dudes. Although I'm sure you've got plenty of those dudes as well that dig their Harleys. Here's an example, just while I'm looking at it. Honda Grom, this thing weighs, this thing costs about 3,000 bucks, right? Out the door, you're paying 4,000 plus. If you're talking like dollar for dollar, how much bike you're getting for your money, that's the ripoff right there is the Honda Grom. Now, the fun factor with the Honda Grom, that's what people don't take into account. 
And I gotta say, the Harley Davidson, there's something different about the Harley. There's a reason I enjoy going out and learning to drift and do wheelies on Harley over, say, just, you know, the Kawasaki Vulcan here. Even though it costs more money and it's heavier and maybe it's not as fast, you know, there's a reason. It's just the experience. It's everything. It's the thrill, it's the feel. Harley, in a sense, has kind of created their own category of motorcycle, you know? You've got your cruisers, your sport bikes, your street fighters, your supermotos, your naked bikes, and your Harleys. It's, it's not without reason that a lot of other companies for a long time have tried to accomplish what Harley does as far as what they offer in terms of the experience and the ride and all that stuff. Some people probably argue that Harleys are boring, you know, slow, boring motorcycles. Heck no, dude. People who build these Harleys like to the ultimate and they're really rad builds. And that's one thing with the Harleys that you get that you don't get with others is that aftermarket. I think that about wraps it up as far as some of the common themes, the common things that I hear about Harleys, about why they suck, um, you know, why people hate them. If, you, if you've been watching John's Moto Garage for a while, you know I'm all about pointing out the good and the bad. You know what I mean? I'll look at any one of these motorcycles here and if you ask me, I'll tell you what I like about it and what I dislike. You know, what I think is cool, what I think sucks. And it's no different with Harley. Harley obviously has their issues. They've got the problems they need to figure out so that hopefully they're around long enough to keep providing us this stuff. At the end of the day, we're lucky as consumers to have all the options. So whether you dig Harleys or metrics or sport bikes or whatever, we're just lucky to have the option to ride and to be able to pick and choose. That's all I'm about is find the ride that you dig and that you have fun on and, uh, and ride it. That's gonna do it, John's Moto Garage. Like and subscribe if you dig the content. What are some of the myths you guys have heard about Harley Davidsons? Do you agree or disagree with my take on things, my opinion? And if you dig the content, like I said, like and subscribe, the support is much appreciated. Check out Matt Laidlaw's video down below. I'm gonna go check it out now and uh, see, you know, see if we were kind of in line with what we had to say. All right, you guys, like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Adios, nos vemos. Here's another one. All Harley riders are a-holes or jerks or punks or, or, you know, the old Delta Bravo, the DB. I've met really cool dudes on Harleys. I've met punks on Harleys. And uh, conversely, I've met really cool dudes on Metro Cruisers, sport bikes, all that. And I met complete punks on sport bikes and all that as well. I think that stems from the stereotypical, you know, Harley uh, club rider or the dude in the gang, you know, maybe the Hells Angels, I don't know for sure. But a lot of those clubs are actually real supportive of the, of the community. A lot of those clubs stick out for the underprivileged, for the marginalized, for those who are bullied. And so, while you may encounter, you know, some punks on Harleys, you're gonna encounter that on other bikes as well. And that's more an issue with those individuals, not so much with the, uh, the Harley.